everyone, and welcome back to Orange Slice, OSU OKC's podcast. Everything you want to know about OSU OKC, campus events, uh, life on campus, what it's like. Today, our special guest is Kyle Pepper. He is the Director of Safety and Security for OSU OKC. As we well know, safety and security, a huge issue on college campuses across the country, not only here in Oklahoma, but all uh, everywhere everywhere across the country. So Kyle, thank you for joining us. Let's talk about safety and security. Absolutely. It is, like I just said, a big issue on campus and to keep students and faculty and staff safe, it's a big it's a big deal. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, thank you for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. Uh, obviously this is in my wheelhouse uh, <laughs> and so I like talking about it. Sure. Um, you know, safety and security here on campus, um, the main thing that I just try to get people to understand is it's everyone's responsibility, right? Like, I run the department here on campus, and, of course, that's what we do. But we're a small group, and we, we cover what we can, um, you know. And so if if something does happen on campus, uh, you know, we've got the See Something, Say Something initiative through the Department of Homeland Security. Um, that's something that we follow along with. We've mm -hmm. got a date in September every day that we set up a table um, to just talk about it because it's the See Something, Say Something day. Yeah. Um, but here on campus, it's just vital that everyone understands that it's everyone's responsibility to look out for each other. You know, we really are a community. Mm -hmm. um, and once you get here and you start to work here, you kind of figure that out. And especially going to school here, too. You know, I'm, as a former student here myself, um, it really is a community and we look out for each other. And so it, it, that's very important. Look, before we get into specific details about what students and faculty and staff can really uh, do to help themselves around campus in the atmosphere. Let's talk about your division, what your division specifically does, how many sure. people you have work, and we have security 24-7 here. Yeah, absolutely. We're staffed 24-7, 365. There's always somebody here and always someone that can be reached. Uh, the number to call at any time is 945-9111, 945-9111. That will get you a guard anytime. Sure. Um, after hours, uh, the guard that's out on patrol has a cell phone that that number is forwarded to. So, it's not like he has to leave, you know, the office or go back to the office and answer the phone. He's got it with him in his pocket, and he can respond just like that. Sure. Um, right now, we have a crew of about 12. Mm -hmm. um, and like I said, we've got, you know, multiple people that we run, you know, several shifts. Uh, we work holidays. Um, anytime, you know, the campus is dead, there's someone here with mm -hmm. my crew. Yeah. So let's talk about, uh, you know, a lot of people don't think about safety and security until something actually happens. Sure. We've seen recently, you know, the latest incident at Michigan State University where yeah. three people were killed, right. someone walking on campus. Um, it's always good to have a plan. And I know OSU, OKC, your division, the executive yeah. team, all divisions have a plan in place in case anything, the worst were to happen. Absolutely. So we do have an emergency operations plan in place. Um, it was actually the first thing that I did whenever I got here. It was my first big project. Um, you know, I've only been in this role for about seven months now. Um, and that was one thing that I really got started on whenever I, you know, came to work here is I gathered other emergency plans from other places. Mm -hmm. And I looked at, you know, responses from other emergencies around the country and really sat down and tried to formulate the best plan that would work for this campus specifically. Yeah. Um, because, you know, with a college campus that has dormitories and housing, you know, there's there's some different considerations there. There's a lot that you have to take into account. Mm -hmm. um, and since we don't have any of that housing, we just have primarily buildings, classroom, student center, that sort of thing. Um, there's not as great of a risk for criminal activity on campus just because we don't have people that live here. Yeah. Um, but, you know, whenever we created the emergency operations plan, um, you know, which you're a part of, um, we just made sure that everyone knew what their role was and made sure that we got that out in a timely manner, got it in place and solidified uh, before the school year actually started. And that's something that I'm going to do every single year. Every summer is, is the time to go back and look at that, look at any kind of major incidents that have happened around the country, maybe around the world, mm -hmm. and see if there's something that we can learn that we can put in place here to prevent that from happening here. Sure. You know, most things that we hear about are just shootings sure. on campus, but the number one campus violence is sexual assault. Absolutely. And even though we don't have dorm dormitories, that is still a possibility within a yeah. campus that doesn't have dormitories. Correct. Absolutely. Um, and, you know, the Clary Act is something that higher education, we have to be in compliance yeah. with. Um, you know, we report every year. We put out our secure annual security report. Um, Jean Clary, the subject of that act, um, she was a student at Lehigh University back in 1970. 
and was actually assaulted and killed, unfortunately, on a college campus, which created, you know, the Clery Act, and that's why we report everything now. Um, But because we have to report those, it also makes you think about how we can prevent those. You know, I mean, prevention is always at the forefront of our mind. And so, yeah, is it possible to have a situation like that here on campus? Yes, it is. Um, but you can say that about anywhere. Yeah, you yeah. know, I wouldn't say it's more dangerous to come here by any means. Right, right. Um, and like I said, we we avoid a lot of that because we don't have campus housing. Yeah, yeah. So, and we are in the middle of a metro area, so sure, yeah, you know, busy who, who, who knows who? Right. And, and our campus is open to the public. Yep. Let's talk specifically about what students can do and faculty and staff to protect themselves sure. when they're on campus. Let's say students come to campus, especially after dark, because yeah. now we're in a time period where it's getting dark early, five yeah. o'clock, five. 30. And so that makes people nervous when they're walking to class or their vehicles by themselves after dark. How can students and faculty and staff take care of themselves? Uh, I mean, one option that you have is call us. Mm -hmm. Uh, And I I tell my guys all the time, uh, we're here to help people. That's what we're here for. And that can look a lot of different ways. You know, if if you need us to come stand by while you walk into the building safely, Mm -hmm. please do that. That's why we're here. Yeah. Um, you know, that number that I mentioned earlier, 945-9111. If you call that and say, hey, there's some people down here. I don't know if they belong or not, but I need to get to the building and I'm just not sure about it. Yeah. No problem. Yeah. We'll show up. We'll make sure you're safe. We'll probably try to figure out what they're doing. Maybe get them <laughs> identified, <laughs> you know, right, right. like, hey, do yes. you belong here or not? Yeah. You know, um, which goes into which goes into the aspect of if you see something, say something absolutely. or call someone. Yes. Because who knows who that person is? Yes. Yes. And I don't ever tell anyone to go try to confront anyone or, right. or figure that out on their own. Yeah. Uh, that's what we're here for. Yeah. You know, um, and so call us. But, you know, if you don't want to call us, just have a plan in place, like have a buddy, you mm-hmm. know, have someone that you meet up with regularly or maybe someone that you park and just wait in the parking lot for, yeah. and you guys walk in together. You know, I mean, strength in numbers. And that's for us, faculty, staff, faculty, and students. Staff, it doesn't matter. Anybody, yeah, yeah anybody. Yeah. Um, but, you know, we'll, we give rides also. So, I mean, if you want to park on main campus and you mm-hmm. need a ride to South Campus, we can give you a ride as well. I mean, that's, that's part of a, a safety escort is making sure you're safe. Yeah, we have a, a different atmosphere here on campus because we do have three different areas for right, the most yeah. part that you guys have to patrol. Yes, yes. Um, you know, we have main campus, mid campus, and south campus is yeah. what we refer to them as. And uh, so we do. I mean, we, we take people from mid campus to main campus and mm-hmm. main down, down to mid. I mean, every day we're giving people rides. So yeah. people are using that service. Mm-hmm. Is there a heightened awareness for your yes. group okay, gotcha. a, a, as you guys know yeah. that there are events, big events like the State Fair, yeah. around okay. the campus? Yeah. So like when the State Fair came, I sent out a campus-wide message, um, you know, just – Kind of reiterating safety and security. There's going to be more people around. Um, you know, we do have a lot of campus events um, with non-campus groups as sure, well. Right. You know, we have, you know, we do have a polling place here on campus mm-hmm. that we use. Um, we have a lot of other events. We had a Friends of the Library event um, because this campus, we really do try to mesh with the community and have events here that benefit the community as well, yeah. not just the students. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, my guys, whenever we have events like that or anything going on um we're definitely at a heightened state Mm -hmm. and my manager and i will step in for a lot of those events and be present for them as well just because we want to be here for them sure i'm sure a lot of people out there are probably asking you guys are right next to the police training center yeah so what is the relationship between osu okc and the police training center because all the time i do see police vehicles in and around campus parked in the parking lot Sure. Are they patrolling our parking lot with you all, or are they doing certain things? Are sure. they always alert to what's going on here as well? Sure. So we do have the Oklahoma City and Oklahoma or the Oklahoma City Police and Fire Training Centers. Yeah. Um, we have a really good working relationship mm-hmm. with both of those entities. Um, the fire department uses our campus a lot for training. They use our parking garage. Um, they use our parking lots. I mean, it's great. Yeah. Um, they do not patrol our campus for us. They like to park in our parking garage, especially in the the hot Mm -hmm. months and the cold ones too with bad weather, just because it kind of gets them out of the elements. Sure. But it allows them to, you know, do their reports, do whatever, eat their lunch, and just kind of hang out on campus. Every time I go in the parking garage and I see someone parked up there, I go hand in my card with a cell phone number. Yeah. You know, and and because they're there, yes. Are they always aware? Maybe not. Mm -hmm. But... They're, it's a resource, and if they get to know me 
and we have that relationship, right, right. it's just going to work out better for everybody. Yeah, it's always so. good to have them, e- even if they don't, even if they're not patrolling. It's sure. always good to have yeah. their presence yeah. welcomed, right? And, and the training center, you know, the training center is just for that. It's for training. Yeah. And so when guys show up to go to training, they might be in plain clothes. They might just go to the wellness center that they have there, something sure. like that. Um, they're not primed and ready to respond to an emergency like they would be if they were on duty. Yeah. Um, but, you know, we we patrol all the time. And like I said, we've made really good contacts with the guys that work this area and work the different shifts. And so that's something that we've always just tried to maintain is that good, solid relationship with them. And about 20 seconds left. I know you guys do training year-round, correct? Yes, absolutely. We do training. Um, I'm a certified instructor in a lot of different areas. Stop the bleed, Alice training, that sort of thing. Okay. So, and real quick, the number that people need to know in case they see or hear anything. 405-945-9111. All right. Call it. All right. Kyle Pepper, Director of Safety and Security, OSU OKC. Thanks for uh, joining us today. Thank you. I appreciate it. All right. Thanks, everyone, for joining Orange Slice. We'll be back next week. Thanks again.